to do and welcome to my knife channel well this one i'm going to call little lockbacks rough rider little lockbacks these guys here are kind of more like a medium but uh i have him sitting up on the snake because of the glare if i set it down like this see how that and if i put the regular camera light on it's really glary so we're going off that solar light and everything else but anyways um these make excellent little fifth pocket knives or loner knives or whatever you want to use them for. And this is just some of the examples that Rough Rider has. Now see, these little cub ones, you can get them in a bunch of different patterns, but it's still the same basic knife. This, I believe, is the Copper series. So it has copper bolsters and a nice black thing but what's cool about this is a little three finger knife you know you might be able to get four fingers on there if you choke up all the way but it's got this little finger twirl and a nice little fat wide blade here i've reviewed this guy before and uh that's the one that's left the scar on me all right so it's a lockback now the reason why in a, in european countries in a lot of places you can't have a lockback but here in America, a lot of times, if it's a small knife, a lockback, you know, doesn't have any real consideration to it. It's more like the length of the blade has more to do with it than the locking mechanism. Although, you know, if you've got like an automatic knife in California, it's got to be under two inches and blah, blah, blah. E knife laws vary from state to state in the United States, but uh, in general, um, whether the a pocket knife is locking or not is not usually a legality thing, uh, and to my knowledge, but I could be wrong. I'm no lawyer. But uh, the whole purpose for this is people think that they're safer, that a locking knife is safer, that it won't close on you. And um, here is, a, for an example, a, a small canoe. It's non-locking. It's a little mini canoe. Now, the way... The way a uh, the way you should really hold a knife is like up here on the kick, so you're gonna feel it. But let's say you're holding it back like this, and you do something stupid with a non-locking knife, which is you stab forward on something that this thing's not designed, you know, to resist. See what that's doing right there? It's gonna be pretty hard me holding this thing right there to cut myself. I mean, I gotta be stabbing pretty hard where my reaction time stops me from uh, realizing that the blade's closing on me and that I don't have a locking blade. So, um, if you if you know how to use a little small traditional non-locking knife, you can get by fine without it having a lock on it. But anyways, these are pretty cool. This is um, one and I think it's called like Peach Stripe Bolster stripe series or whatever i think they call this bolster stripe series and this is a cool little one if you want like a little gentleman's knife also this reminds me on the on the um the symbol i hear on the you know how all the time rough rider always likes to do this the big r i like this one a lot better because uh it says rr there so you don't have to worry where, whether it's an I or a Y, whether it's going to get outdated or anything, you know, as far as, like, them making it. It's in the shape of a horseshoe. It can throw in there, you know, another little thing they want to do in there, and that just looks kind of like horseshoe nails from a distance. So it's, it's it looks good this way. And I was thinking about horseshoes, you know. Um, used to be a horse was a method of travel. So it was a, a ubiquitous thing, you know, to, to see a horse and to have a horse and just harkens back to an older time you know um we've made improvements because you know cities that had horses and stuff in it you know a horse is gonna take a crap and if you step in that man you're gonna get it all over your shoes and then what are you gonna do you're gonna walk into a store and you're gonna track that literally track that shit right in there you know so it smelled a lot and it was filthy uh, we substitute that for gasoline-powered cars that polluted the atmosphere didn't pollute the ground but still it was a lot better as far as like the people on the ground were concerned 
But the horse went away. So I guess the equivalent to, you know, something like this would be as if we stamped our um, symbol on our bolster with a tire, like a wheel or something instead of a horseshoe. Anyway, uh, Rough Rider makes a brass version of a small lock mic. This is the smallest one. They make another one that's just slightly larger that's brass. These are excellent little... You know, just utility knives. And because they're small, the extra weight of the brass is not going to affect it so much that you think, like, oh, this thing's excessively heavy. No, it's pretty cool. And it'll patina, you know, over time. So, they're pretty cool. This one is 2004, RR2004. But it's got a nice little shape to it and everything. A little clip point, a little... Somewhat hollow grind here. And then this one's a burl wood. Little small lock pack. Again, you know, you're starting to get up to more of a medium size. I can put four fingers on here with no problem. And uh, I don't mind the lock pack. If it works, this one works. The solid lock up and everything. Now this um, more gentleman type of Barlow lock pack that I've got. It's starting to get a little bit of side-to-side -side wiggle. See that? Just a little side-to-side -side wiggle. So I could smack it with a knife. I mean, with a hammer if I want to put it in a vise. Um, but I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, this one is... Now, now, what made me buy this one is, first, I like the yellow Darlin. I'm starting to get into that a lot on knives. And uh, they had this one right here. But... What made me want it is basically it's this knife in the Black Widow series. And what I liked about this knife, besides the blade shape and everything, is this little cutout for your hand there. It just makes it so ergonomic. And the, the little extra width in the back here is not annoying. And it doesn't get in the way. It actually adds for stability. So that's basically this knife. It's the same thing, basically, in yellow Darlin. And I've sharpened this one. This edge, it's not exactly the way it came, um, so it's a lot sharper. But this is a pretty cool little size work knife. It's not, um, you know, as heavy as like a buck 110 or whatever, but it has the same kind of like basic principle, you know, straight lock back and everything. And uh, you've got a fairly good size blade on this is about two inches two and a quarter maybe overall but yeah now it's it's not necessarily the size of the knife you know because if you were thinking which one would be the most dangerous in here uh like i said it's this little guy thumb biter um and that's just because of my stupidity any of these knives would have given me that type of scar on there a bigger knife probably would have come close to severing tendons in here and i wouldn't have had to use my thumb but yeah i can still work my thumb it works fine so yeah it's just um yeah i violated the rule of cutting towards you and i was actually holding the material like this and cutting towards me which is and the material was plastic but you always got to watch out with plastic it's tricky you know, because it has a lot of resistance and then none. And yeah, that's what happened. But um yeah, just um nice little knives to try out. This one actually is a little lanyard hole. You could put it on a keychain or something like that. It's not too heavy. So there you go. There's some little knives that I've already got. Like I said, it's end of the month i haven't got paid yet so i'm not going to be getting any knives in anytime soon but when i do i'll show them to you and if i can come up with something like this i'll let you know a little subject about little knives little lockbacks thank you for watching and have a nice day